All right. Let's see. It is Monday. Waiting for this to go live. Is this live? <laughs> Chantel 1984, Jared Allen, Christina. T. I'm going to try to get to your question today. Motion. Right on. Yes, we are, Jared Allen, we are alive. That is, that is how we're doing. All right. <laughs> Christina from Venice. All right. This is fantastic. All right, guys. And if you are watching on YouTube or Periscope, shoot me a comment. That's the only way I can see you as I am going through Restream. Nyborg007, how you doing? Good looking, right on. Nyborg, let's do it. Jared Allen. All right. This is great. Guys, it's Monday. Tally 1975. Oh, this is great. So many of y'all. Oh, my son Fred Webb loves your show. He suggested it to me. Well, right on. I love it. Well, I... I I hope you've listened to it, and I hope you enjoy it as well. We're trying to do our best here. And, uh, wow, everyone's rolling in today. This is great, guys. I missed you all, too. That's what I'm saying. What's up? Oh, you cats and kittens. Right on. Well, guys, you know, after how many weeks of this, and here we are, yeah, we're at week... We're rolling into week nine. I feel that we are slowly putting together a cool. Oh no, I hear there's no audio in Periscope Land. Let me try that again, Jennifer. I hate when that happens. Uh, let me see here. Oh, that's exactly why. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, we're having technical difficulties this, this morning, everybody. We'll try to do that again. All right, I don't know why, it is certainly having, it is having difficulties connecting over there. You're so energetic, are you high on something? Maybe, maybe not. High on, high on life, Mustafa, that is right. All right, well, guys, I'm having a having some difficulties. I'm going to try to do this again. Chilling over here in York, PA. York, PA. I've been to York, PA. I, I grew up in Pennsylvania. All right. So, Jennifer, I just threw that up there again. If, if it's not working well, I'm just going to have to push the... Instagram on YouTube today. I don't know why it is not working, but that has been a running theme here with our little morning show is the technical difficulty. So it brings us up to our first topic. Guys, I've told you many, many times. Oh, Estefan, how you doing? I missed you guys all weekend as well. This is great that so many of you were, were excited for Monday. I, I, that makes me excited and together we will have a great week and we will accomplish a lot. So guys, this brings me to my, my first topic. <laughs> yep, your frames too. Well, thank you very much. This is great. I love, I love everything about you as well. Can you hear audio? Oh, they're still messing over there. Ah. I don't know what's what's up with that, folks. I, I don't know. So, <clears throat> sorry guys, we have a little bit of a technical difficulty. It seems that my restream is not going to Periscope, and so we'll have some people coming in from over there. That is upsetting. All right, guys. So, as you know, I've been doing this rigmarole for... Uh, quite some time, this is nine weeks, trying to do my best to go live to you every morning. And of course, there always seems to be technical difficulties. And 
When it comes to technology, I really don't have any idea what I'm doing. In fact, it's, it's, it's Instagram difference. <laughs> LA Jen, welcome. Yes, we'll see. It's on a different device because you can't restream it. So it is different. And LA Jen, you are now meeting, we pivot. You are now meeting all the Instagram folks who, who you see. Jen is one of our Periscope folks. And so for all of you Instagram people, give her a big welcome. Give her some hearts. <laughs> It's nice. <laughs> See that, guys? You've made a very hospitable place for our Periscope and YouTube people. All right. So as I was saying, th this whole experiment has been wrought with, with technical difficulties from day one. And I'm trying to fumble through this to the best of my ability. And, you know, I have this set up. I, I keep it the same just so I could I could wake up, come over here and just pop on a pop these things on and go live. And sometimes with the internet and everything, it's not working all that well. Are you wearing a wig? Does this look like a wig? Get out of here. Guys, keep your eyes on style loft. <laughs> Obviously they are new here. All right, so with that, um, you know, I, I'm kind of, listen, I'm, I'm Gen X, I'm 46 years old. So I have, I'm in this weird place with technology where I'm half boomer um, and half millennial because in my, in my life, for, for most of my growing up, though I had computers and video games, uh, it wasn't a big part of my life, nor was the technology there to make it all that important to me. I, it would have definitely been a different childhood if the technology was where it is today. And that's my first bit. So with that, you know, I grew up wanting to play music and skateboarding. And so a lot of my life was was living in real life. There wasn't much of a virtual world to be a, to be a part of. And with that, you, of course, my friends and I, we played video games. We would even be on the phone with each other experiencing these different worlds, but it's nothing like it is today. And so with this technology, with everything that is going on, I am basically a, a, a boomer when it comes to a lot of this. And also, I find out about these worlds online that exist, that have their own languages, that have their own communities, and I find it extremely fascinating. And so with that, sorry guys. Oh, so now my computer just shot off, all right. So with that, with all this that was going on, um, a few weeks ago, I had, I had been asked to, to do a interview and it was on Twitch. Now, I don't really know anything about Twitch. I know it's a, it's a gaming site, but I didn't pay it any mind. I thought it was just another portal. And there I was, uh, using Twitch, doing an interview and I didn't think much of it. And the guy who was doing the interview told me that Twitch is a, a gaming site. So kids stream games and they talk to each other and they do their thing. It wasn't until, uh, well, yeah, Jen, so I just found out about this. So it wasn't until a few days ago that Twitch had become more and more popping up in, in my worlds online. And I guess there's a thing where, where you just, you build communities around video games and, and there's also chatting channels, much like we're doing right here. Now, the, <laughs> the, the, 
I guess the rule is that there's supposed to be no sexual exploitation or nudity or anything like this, but yet all these guys chat with these girls on these streams and there's they're sort of the girls have figured out how to make it suggestive um so I, this is a, a whole new, you know when you hear about 4chan or reddit i don't know these worlds i never i i that's that was they're more millennial gen z things and so i guess the same it seems to be twitch but anyway I had to investigate because somebody's like, well, yeah, you should at least look at it and see what it is. So, though the girls are not supposed to to be ex um, exploiting themselves or 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 making money off their communities by be, being explicit, within five minutes of just traveling around over there, I had realized... That they're, but they are allowed to body paint themselves. So there's channels with girls sitting in their gamer chairs covered in body paint. And uh, <laughs> let, let me just say that I was, uh, my child is not allowed on Twitch. So let's just say that Boomer Johnny has discovered a whole brand new world that did not know existed. Which brings us up to our first topic. <laughs> yes, it was it was quite the jolt. I don't know what to make of it, guys. It's totally alien to me, and I just thought I would brought it brought it up because it it was a shock to my system. How did the animal handle it? Well, much like your child, he's not allowed on Twitch either. Um, so this brings me to our, our first topic what is in your coffee just coffee it is it is rack coffee random act of kindness coffee they they have they have kindly sent some to the show and somebody has since sent me some so one of the questions i got this week guys was i um in fact let me go ahead and, and read it Uh, I hate that we're having periscope problems today. All right, so let me go over to first question. Here we go. This is a question is from Joel. I have a question, and what is? What are your thoughts on best to deal with your friends who are posting their lockdown opinions on social media? expecting you to accept it as gospel. I just stayed quiet, but not sure what it means or friendship going forward. They seem to be mused by people snoozing or blocking them. Well, I have a lot to say about this, guys. Do you have to understand the motivation of people who are doing this? Now, I'm going to I'm going to guess there are you are what you are seeing in your feed is what you are seeing in your feed is the overt expression of trying to offend people with ridiculous articles and opinions and st stuff to just looking to shock people. And there are these people who just try to post the most shocking, offensive, stuff it's a it's a it is a it seems to be a lifestyle and it also seems to come from uh reddit and 4chan in which the the idea of being so shocking is has a has a merit to it you are you are riling people up and when it goes to places outside of those forums say like facebook it's easier to flip people out. It is easier to, to rile them up because for those people, they're what those communities call normies. For instance, I would be, I would, I guess I would be considered a normie when it comes to 
a Reddit crowd or a 4chan crowd. I'm not going to get the jokes of that community. I'm not going to understand the rules of those communities. And those communities, those communities do their best in shocking people and separating themselves from others. You have to think about what is the age range on those communities. And I would think for a lot of them, they're, they're younger, they're teenagers, they're in their early 20s. Those communities pride themselves off on finding each other and, and using their language and their rules as a, as a connector and a badge of, of honor of, of the world that they're in. For myself, you know, look, look at my hair, look at the way I dress. It's signaling to a world that I'm involved in, which is, uh, as 46 years old, I've been playing music and rock and roll bands since I was a teenager. There is an aesthetic that comes with that. It's all about signaling. Now, there is the, the signaling of being adept at knowing those communities such as Reddit and Twitch and, and, uh, and Forgeon. But when you bring those ideas and, and, the, and that signaling to other social media, such as Instagram or, or Facebook, uh, it's, there's first of all to shock, but, and also to signal to see if there's anyone else out there that you are able to connect with. And at the same time, there is also this idea to be able to, to rock people in a way that gives you some power and control. So let me, got, let me give you guys an example of what people do in order to feel some control over their lives. Here in Los Angeles, we have a homeless problem and it has been exacerbated by the pandemic. The homeless folk have been building up their camps for the last two months and for a lot of those folks, they have been pushed aside in society to such a degree where they seem to be, to, at least to themselves, invisible to the regular people who are going on about their lives, who are participating in society on, on another level. What those people do, and this is, I'm referring to the, the, the the people who are a little bit mentally not all there, one of the things that they do is they walk into the middle of the street in, in which they will stop traffic and they will yell at the cars. Now, there is a mechanism inside which this turns on, which is the ability when you have no control to exert power, to exert control. And so for the first time in days, for a lot of these people, they are seen and heard for the first time. And by walking into the street, holding up that traffic, it, it, is, it becomes apparent to the people in the car and to that person who is doing it, that they, there is a, there is a power dynamic going on, at least for that moment, and that they're being seen and that they're being heard and that they are allowing you to know I exist. Some of that same idea and some of that same mechanism is the same thing that happens on social media. For some of these people, the idea to shock and awe with some of this offensive stuff that they might post is, is a way to, to gain some control, to be seen for the, for the first time in a long time. It is about getting attention. Remember, attention, approval, 
and acceptance are the three things for human beings that each one of us need in order to feel good. And we all have ways of going about getting attention, approval, and acceptance. And we can do that through high value means by accomplishments, expression, creating, producing, uh, getting a, the attention in a good way. Or we can do that in a, in a, in a, in a low value manner, shock and all, sympathy, um, uh, destruction, all of these things will, will, will get you the same amount of attention. And for some people, it is the idea, especially in the, in the technology area that we're in, that any publicity is good publicity. And you see that with the, the publicity stunts that are going on and off with social media and movies and anyone who is looking to get more attention for their work. I have noticed that for a lot of the people that I see who seem to do nothing all day except post offensive, insane stuff in order to shake up the normies around them is, is an, is an, opportunity for them to be heard for that first time. Also an opportunity for them to exert uh, this, their own bit of power for that moment. And for a lot of these people, they're posting things that may be offensive to and upsetting for some, but there's also a, a, a proportion of truth. Uh-oh. There we go. Guess we're having some, we're having some internet problems today, guys. Um, but there are also some truth behind it to, uh, that allows people to to smugly f feed you information that they don't know that you want. And I have noticed that people who tend to do this on a regular basis, daily basis, some just find it funny, but some do it in a mean spirited manner where. Once the, the net, they just move on to the next thing. That there is no real agenda behind what they are doing. There's about edu educating people, uh, bringing them to their side of the argument. All it is, is about shock and all. And so when you have people in your feed who are doing this type of stuff, or you've noticed this behavior in certain friends of yours, you have to question the the worth and the the amount of of positivity that they're bringing to your relationship. As I mentioned, not everyone that you meet is worth your time. And as we grow older and our time gets more important to us, and our habits and productivity becomes an important factor of who we are and what we want to be doing, well then Every person's value gets weighed of whether or not they're worth having in your life. And that becomes a very important thing. So for Joe, Joel's question here, if you, if you are seeing this type of behavior and you find it unbecoming or unproductive or toxic and it's just messing up, and if you see enough of that in your feed, it starts to bum you out. So... I would, my, my recommendation for you, Joel, is to come to terms with deleting these people out of your life. Uh, if, they're, if they're friends, if they're family, or listen, you don't have to cut them out, but you can, you can limit the amount of time that you spend with these people. You can also unfollow them, but yet still remain friends with them. I've probably <laughs> unfollowed more people in the last few months uh, than I have uh, in the last few years, just because with the climate and the pandemic, everyone is losing their minds and the argumentative nature of people are, are really coming out. Granted, we're in a crossroads of what to do in this global pandemic of how we're going to open the country. 
There are some people who are willing to have an adult conversation and there's other people who just wanna yell and scream at everybody. Um, those people are not welcome to the table. They're not welcome to have that conversation. So, you kicked me out too? <laughs> I don't remember that, Charlie. Um, but with that, your social circle and your well-being and, and your productivity is going to be dependent on the people that you have around you. So that question of what do you do about this going forwards, listen, they're only there to be argumentative. If it's not helping you, if they're not bringing value to the argument, then it's not worth it. And I also have to say, there is a way of, if. If educating people or bring, making them aware of certain issues is your goal, then there are tactful ways of going about that. Flinging offensive, insane, attention-grabbing memes is your game. You're just, you're just, it's more about the shock and all for you then it's not about winning the argument it's not about educating people it's not a it's not about enlightening your feed absolutely so so you know for for me it's always about uh whether or not this person is adding or taking away from my my well-being and that's an easy one to 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 ask i mean is this person is is, is when you see their feed and it is, is this insane stuff is it upsetting you unfollow and guess what with the unfollow you're still friended you're still a friend of, of them you're just not seeing their garbage in your feed i certainly don't have time for argumentative stuff if i am putting stuff posting stuff that may be contrarian to to the other mainstream narrative i'm doing it in a way because i want people to enlighten to the situation i'm trying to educate people i want people to understand my point of view i that is completely different than just posting to be offensive to be shocking to to rattle cages that's a completely different thing um, and for myself, I see a lot of those rules in, uh, in, in those other communities that bleed into the mainstream. Uh, for me, I, when I was a kid, what we did as friends was find ways to be com completely belligerent and obnoxious to other people. <clears throat> That has not changed. As teenage boys, we had a whole vocabulary, language, and everything that we did was a way to piss off other people. Why? That has not changed. It is now relegated to certain communities of the internet, such as what I had mentioned earlier with Twitch, own rules, own communication, 4chan, their own rules, their own language. Uh, Reddit, it's all the same thing. And then those those ideas and offensiveness bleed over. They want to shock the normies. That's what it's all about. So guys, uh, sorry about the technical difficulties today. That really bums me out. I will try to fix that for tomorrow. If you're interested in more AOC stuff, check out the Communication Accelerator. It is all the best in connection, rapport building, and persuasion from our online and in-person training programs and all of our expert guests over the last 15 years. You can find the Communication Accelerator in the Instagram link tree, in the Twitter bio, and in the descriptions of YouTube. Guys, I will have these bugs worked out tomorrow. Hopefully uh, it's nothing major. And have a great Monday and have a great week. Animal, those are some hearts for you. See you guys. Thanks for joining me over on Insta.